Oh hi, I didn't see you there. I'm Philbert D, and uh, I'm probably stuck in Q Cinema covering things. This is Phil on Films. This week, let's talk about Q Cinema. Dion Monsanto plays Commander Leah, an officer in the New People's Army. She also plays Ryza, a soldier in the AFP. These two women, who look exactly alike, are on opposite sides of a conflict but are completely unaware of each other's existence. But their paths intersect in an operation that involves a disgraced military general hiding out in Mindanao. So this movie gets off to a pretty wild start with this rapidly cut montage of really compelling images detailing an escape to the mountains that ends with this really strange twist. And and then the film goes back in time and re-establishes the parameters of the conflict, setting up an encounter that turns out to be this pretty compelling action scene. There are certainly flaws in it, it isn't perfect, but um, pretty credible as an action sequence, especially given the limited budget. But the film loses that momentum pretty quickly. It settles into this ideological groove where people are just talking to each other or monologuing or establishing plot details that don't really matter in the end. I am told that this film was supposed to get a co-producer but that fell through and they really had to realign their priorities. They weren't able to be as ambitious as they wanted to be and that's a shame. What we end up getting here is a film that still kind of feels like an action movie but but in the middle of it, there's just maybe eight minute one take monologue that has a character talking about how the US isn't really any different from Nazi Germany. And while there are still interesting things being said in it, and you know, these filmmakers are the only filmmakers that are so willing to go out of their way to say interesting ideological things about conflict in the Philippines. It just doesn't really work as a piece of cinematic entertainment. Full credit goes to them for being so ambitious, but um, it just doesn't work out. Two and a half stars. Uy, ano na? Ako na lang ba yung inyong mag-isa? Hindi ka ba sasama? Babot ko ng bayad, kuya. Janine Gutierrez is a department store sales lady really struggling with life in Metro Manila. She's stuck in a loop, suffering the abuse of an unjust world day in and day out. And then one night, she hears a gunshot in the distance. She heads out to the street and finds a loaded gun among some trash. She takes it, and with it on her person, she starts to exercise a power and aggression that she didn't know she had in her. This movie is a study of violence. Violence in the way that we regularly think about it, which generally involves people pointing guns at each other. And also a more everyday mundane violence. The kind that we experience just by living in a society that doesn't really care about us. Our main character is berated at work for having torn stockings with no thought for how she might be able to afford new stockings. She goes through the hell of the commute through Metro Manila. She gets catcalled in the street and her landlord is terrible it's just the film is really really good at portraying the troubles of everyday life in Manila as genuine violence by the time she gets a gun it's already violent enough that like she never actually has to use it to really convey the awfulness of the situation now the film takes a pretty dramatic turn where it goes basically from this story into another one, exploring the history of violence that creates this context for the everyday violence that she's going through. And um, there are just a few stray details here and there that make it difficult to bridge the gap between this history and the present. It's nothing too dramatic, nothing that really feels wrong, but it does it, these details keep the timeline from holding together strongly enough to really make the point between the two sides of this story feel really matched up but through it all the mounting of the production is so excellent that you can still kind of let things go you can just let yourself be carried away by the flow of it there's a, it's a really good rhythm to this film and um, the sound and music choices are so excellent that 
you just kind of get into the groove of it. This is a really excellently directed film and I'm looking forward to seeing more Ray Red films in the future. Four stars. Cleaners tells four stories of high school kids growing up in Tegagarao back in the 2007-2008 school year. The film follows a neat freak student trying to get into a dance troupe, a trio of emo kids assigned to do the folk dance for Ningunawika, the courtship between two bullied students, and the son of the mayor running for the SK. Through each of these stories, these kids are forced to break out of their comfort zones, coming of age in the filth of their respective situations. So we gotta talk about how this film looks. What they did here was they printed out frames from the film and then photocopied them and then highlighted in some sections. They colored in the clothes of the lead characters with different colored highlighters. And then they scanned these photocopies back in and then animated the whole film at 8 frames a second. Now this might seem like an overly complicated gimmick but it's actually integral to how this film works. This look makes it feel like a memory. It makes it look like like a memory. It's something that's a little fuzzy with only little bits of it highlighted in our mind. It takes the nostalgia of high school and really gives it this strange layer of obfuscation that makes everything feel almost heightened and at the same time distant. It's really quite a wonderful film. It's a little funny, it's a little heartwarming. There are bits of it that are really genuinely affecting and by the end it all forms this portrait of a quiet life in the province that wasn't actually all that quiet at all. I really love this film. I often talk about how these festivals create little miracles at times. There are some films that like in the abstract when you hear about them being made it sounds like there's just no way it's gonna work out. There's not enough time. There's never gonna be enough money. That gimmick is just gonna be a gimmick but then it all comes together somehow and you watch it and you realize that there's just some magic in filmmaking sometimes. I can't wait for people to see this film. I want it to travel the Philippines, going school to school, maybe having students watch them and relate and see something really magical in a film that doesn't really have any stars, in a film that doesn't look like anything they've seen before. It's a really great film. Five stars. Thanks for joining us. I wish I had more time to talk about things. I really like to talk about the Q Cinema Shorts. There, it's a really exceptional program, and I'd like to get into these films one by one. But I generally don't have the time. I also, I've also seen Jet Lagos documentary for my alien friend, and uh, it's this kind of John Torres film that's more like aggressive in engaging its audience and it's pretty great and i'd like to, people to see that as well but yeah i gotta get back to the cinema because i have to see movies uh so just until then why don't you hit like or dislike and subscribe or whatever and leave a comment ask questions do all the internet things and until next time goodbye internet lenny is still my vice president